Hello everyone, I am Prasad from Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about controlling water pressure in retaining walls. You know, during the design and construction, depending on the location of the site, the water pressure need to be considered. So, when water pressure is applied on a retaining wall, you have to consider that. Otherwise, there will be a severe consequences that I will discuss in this video and method of designing a retaining wall for considering the water pressure and how to minimize the water pressure in a water retaining wall design and construction will be discussed in today's video. Okay, let's begin our lesson. Right, you know why we need to construct retaining walls. If you have a earth cut like this, we need to have some certain support. This may be a concrete or this may be a rubber. You may need to have some sort of a mechanism, something like this. There are different different types of retaining wall that I am not going to discuss. But this kind of a structure need to be constructed in a as a retaining structure to protect or protect this kind of embankments. Right. Now, when it comes to the retaining walls, you know, at the grounds, say, this is your water table. In brown water table may be vary, but it could be somewhere here. If it is somewhere there, we don't want to worry. But if it is somewhere here, we have to consider the water pressure for the design and construction. Especially when you build the retaining wall, when the seepage path is blocked now. Even if you have a slope like this, your water might be flowing in this direction like this. But with the construction of the retaining wall, all those seepage path paths are being blocked. Now there's no way to water flow because of the retaining wall. It won't be flowing, so the water pressure will be developed in this area. Right. Now let's see what is the magnitude of the water pressure. Now let's see first what is the magnitude of soil pressure. Now you know when you design the retaining walls here, the soil pressure. How how we consider the soil pressure now? Soil pressure we consider in a retaining wall of this nature we call the active active pressure. So how do you can calculate the active pressure coefficient? The, it's called active pressure coefficient Ka. That is one minus sine phi plus divided by one plus sine phi. This sine phi is the friction angle of the soil. Generally, for this example, we consider it as a thirty. This generally friction angle is about uh, 30 generally but it depend, depends on the soil type. For this example if it is if this is 30 we can come up with 3.33 when you substitute 30 there you get 0.33 right. Now uh, you know what is the water pressure or water density right. Water density is 10 kilo newton per meter cube right. Now let's see what are the pressures developed in this area. We, how do we calculate the soil pressure? Soil pressure, soil, P soil, let's say K A gamma soil H. You can see K A gamma H. Now how do we calculate the water pressure? P W water pressure equal gamma W H. Right. Now you can see here gamma W is 10. Right, 10 h 10 depending on the height water pressure will be vary but it's multiple layer of 10 right now when it comes here your ka is about 0.33 that is 0.3 right now your density of soil would be around say dry density of soil generally is about 18 but let's say it's 24 in this example for ease of calculation. This multiple is about 6, right? So multiple is about 6, right? Then the soil pressure will be this approximation 6 is approximation. Soil pressure will be 6 into h. Now you can see the difference because this difference actually will be comparable. Let's say this is actually 6. Point, you can say about 6.6. So you can see this difference. So this is 6.6, .6, this is 10, right? You can see difference. Now let's say when you are doing the design, when you are doing the design, 
if you are designed this structure for only for the soil pressure now let's see this is the retaining wall again structure you consider the sorry piece soil, soil pressure only sorry soil pressure only you have considered but if the water pressure develop here what will happen you see 10 times h pressure will be applied you design for this one in addition to this you have to consider you will have 10 times h you see more than what you design will be applied in addition to that that's what the point here so you design 6.6 h but your pressure will be applied 6.6 h plus 10 so it is a 16 point something so very high pressure will be developed in the retaining wall due to this there could be a very high chance of failure of the retaining wall so therefore when you design the retaining wall you must be very careful against the water pressure because if you don't have considered that and if it is applied there will be a huge problem so therefore you have to do necessary precautions when you are doing the designs now one thing is you can predict water pressure or rise of the water table and consider that for the design that is one option second option is the reduction of the water pressure that we are going to discuss today there are many methods to reduce the water pressure in retaining walls let's say our retaining wall is like this so your ground level will be like this you have a water level somewhere here so how do you do now what one one thing you can do is you can consider this water height and do the design otherwise you can reduce the water height some up to somewhere this height and you can do the design for this you can do the design for this kind of a height so what how do you reduce to this right this is the challenge now what first and foremost important thing here is to provide the weak hole you might have heard that you provide sleeves or pipes to the retaining wall like this what will happen now when you provide the pipes like this and you have to do a certain detail special detail they have to collect the water and once you collect the water then water will be flowing out from this side then the water pressure will be developed like this because water pressure on the retaining wall won't be applied because you are getting this water out right so if you are continuously doing that then water vapor pressure will be developed on this water, water water table will be developed like this then water pressure won't be applied in the retaining wall right other method is the collective run this might be sometimes difficult depending on the aesthetic appearance and all that then those situations what we can do is say your retaining wall will be like this i'm showing the rear side of the retaining wall so we are this is the front face your rear side will be like this right this, this is your rear, rear side so what we can do is we can play we can place pipe like this pipe network like this and we can collect the water to one point and discharge or somewhere here you can get the water and discharge you can even send it from this here yeah, that is from one location then you take it out how do you do this piping now you can just you can't just put the pipe but what you can do is you have to use the perforated pipe right perforated pipe it has holes in the pipe this pipe will be like this right you make holes randomly you make holes in this pipe then water can go into the pipe so then once you do the pipe then you can cover it with the your textile then you have you need to have a rubber packing like this you can put the metals on the, this like right? single graded metal would be good so you can put the stone here like this so you have filled with stones in the same grade grid grade so the same grade in, it means the same size maybe 20 millimeter maybe 40 millimeter right 40 millimeter that's the same same size material would be better but you might better try to have a same grade material that is same size material then 
what will happen you can easily collect the water to the to the these pipes then you can discharge with that as i explained here the water pressure will be dropped and water can be taken out so for this one also as i mentioned here you can connect this and take it out so you can take it out somewhere here if you have a drain at down level lower level so that's it now it's clear to you why we need to control the water pressure at retaining walls how do we control the water pressure what are the precautions that we must be taken because if it is severe case we have to be very careful if you have a weak ground condition have very high water table then you can see here as i mentioned in addition to the pressure we design there will be very high pressure will be applied on the retaining wall that is this will be like 16.6 h approximately the water pressure pressure on the retaining wall pressure on the retaining wall so you can see here pressure on the retaining wall will be something like this that is so your retaining wall will be like this say you have water and so you have the same height this is 16.6 h will be applied okay 6 here 16.6 h will be applied on the retaining wall but you might have designed the retaining wall for this is for 6.6 h maybe so you can see the difference therefore you have to be very careful when you're doing the designs of the retaining wall you have to make sure you have, you have done the design correctly and you have considered correct factors right with that i'm going to end today's video let's meet again from the video thank you very much for watching our videos